My name, my name is Mario Sanchez, and today we're going to be doing an intro to Lifetail. This is part of our How To Webinar series, and a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. As you noticed, uh, you're in listen-only only mode, um, and this is to minimize the distraction, given that there's quite a few of you on the call. But if you have any questions, feel free to send me the questions through the chat on the GoToMeeting panel, um, or you will have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end as well. So by all means, feel free to send your questions. Uh, I'll try to keep an eye on them as, as we go through. Um, but this should be a shorter, shorter than usual session only because um, the tool is pretty cool and it's very easy to use. So let's get started. Introduction to Lifetail, again, part of the How to Webinar series. And we'll start with the um, with a 30,000 foot view. Um, what is Lifetail, some of the use cases. And then I'm gonna jump into a Lifetail demo. I'm gonna show you how to run, start running Lifetail, how to pause it, stop it, how to filter and highlight keywords, how to set up your preferences. So if you wanna have them in um, light gray or dark green um, mode, and then also how to search to start doing, uh, how to switch to your search so you can do some trend analysis of, as well, um, just like you have probably been doing with Sumo Logic so far. Last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about uh, command line interface, and I'm going to demo that as well and walk you through the steps of, of how to get it installed. And then we'll open it up for a little bit of Q&A as well. All right, so um, 30,000 foot view to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, Sumo Logic is broken into three high-level areas. Your data collection, which is done through uh, your collectors and sources. In the middle, once your data is into, in Sumo Logic, uh, we talk about searching and analyzing. So we have a host of operators and charts uh, to allow you to, visual, to start making sense of your data and turn it into information. And last but not least, then we can start visualizing and monitoring your data through alerts and dashboards. Today, we're going to be focusing on Lifetail, which is probably more closely to this second part where you're trying to do some troubleshooting, when you're trying to do some uh, analyzing of uh, either your DevOps shop or uh, your IT infrastructure. So Lifetail falls in this second um, point in here. So what is Lifetail? Well, Sumo Logic Lifetail allows you to see real-time feeds of log events associated with a source host, which you can then use as a tool for development and troubleshooting. Um, really, Lifetail mimics your command line, and it provides all log messages as they come in with, with a low latency. So very similar to using uh, tel F in your command line. Now, who, who benefits from getting Lifetail within Sumo Logic? Well, obviously, developers, now they can centralize and analyze their logs in real time so they can start testing their new code. Um, but also for IT ops, they can debug issues in a production environment. And the key here is that they can do this without actually having to log onto those production instances as well. So let's jump into a demo of, of, uh, of Lifetail. If you have been using Sumo Logic for a while and then all of a sudden you start, um, we turned on Lifetail, you probably have seen these three little, this message here saying introducing um, Lifetail, and then if you went to the Lifetail, you probably got these three little steps that walk you through how to use Lifetail. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to walk you through those steps and show you the things that I'm that I'm pulling up in this bubble in here. So let me switch over to my instance. This is just a generic training instance that I've used for other how-to webinars, and uh, there's a couple of ways to get into Lifetail. One is uh, launching it from the search itself, if I was already doing a search. But to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the search, under search, and go to the Lifetail page. So um, you notice here, uh, since this is the first time I'm using Lifetail with this instance, it's actually walking me through. This is the search bar. Here's where you put your search query. Um, step two is you can pause the auto-scrolling. Um, and also the third one is you can start highlighting keywords. So I'm going to demo those for you. I'm going to hide these messages here and start demoing that for you. First and foremost, notice that you can run um, a Lifetail session on your source category, on your source host, your source name, your source, and your collector. So for those of you who have used Sumo Logic before, you probably realize that these are your five metadata uh, fields that you've normally been able to search on. So in our case, we're going to do um, source category. And I'm going to choose something like source category equals uh, Apache Access. And what you will notice is if I hit, oop, I misspelled it. If I hit enter, um, my live tail session should be started. It's telling me right here that it started. And there you go. There is my messages now scrolling through my screen. 
And I can do a couple of things. If I want to pause it because I want to focus on a particular message, I can click on this pause button over here. Or similarly, I could have scrolled up and down this window and that would have paused it as well. I can restart the scrolling by just clicking on this down arrow or by clicking on this button down at the bottom that says jump to bottom. As you'd expect, I can also um, filter by certain words. So if I say source category Apache Access and the word get, then that's going to filter the messages that are scrolling up on my screen to just those that have the word get as part of it. Hand in hand with filtering, you can also highlight keywords. So for example, I might want to highlight the keyword get. Or maybe I want to highlight all those um, messages that are coming with a 404 error code. So if you notice now, I have a couple of messages here. I'm going to pause this for a second and see if I can spot a 404. There you go. Here's a 404 as well. So what, that's what highlighting is all about. Pretty straightforward. Now, if I, um, I can also have um, split my screen and have a couple of sessions running. So in this case, I'm going to run one on collector equals advertising easy to. And this is one of my installed collectors. And I can run that as well. And as you'd expect, I can do its own highlighting and its own fil filtering. So for example, I might want to filter on the word error. And I might want, I'm sorry, I want to highlight on the word error. And I want to highlight on the word fault as well. And I can get that second live tail session running uh, um, with, with its own highlighting of words as well. Um, it's possible I have no data coming into that collector, so it, that's why I'm not showing anything in here. Additionally, I can play with some of the preferences as well. If I click on preferences, I can change my sessions to, instead of regular line spacing, I can choose compact, or perhaps I want to choose comfortable. I might want to make the font a little bit bigger, and perhaps I want, this I want to change the color of the message itself. And you notice that that just simply changes the color. Speaking of launching additional live tail sessions, I can launch up to four sessions as a user. So if you notice, once I click the plus sign, it opens another tab for me to run another session. And if I were to click the plus sign again, it opens yet another window so that I can have up to four different sessions running in here. Okay, so far so good. Um, I'm going to stop this live tail session and um, talk a little bit about, um, so, so far what I've shown you is the fact that I can uh, run some live tails, I can pause them, I can move around, I can highlight, um, but also I might want to, if I, if I find, let's say for example, that I'm getting quite a few 404s, I perhaps want to go back to my search, to my robust search engine that Sumo Logic already offers, and I want to go do additional uh, trending over there. So if I click on show and search, what this is going to do is it's going to take that query that I was running in the tail side, and then it takes me to the search page. And now I have at my disposal um, all the machine learning algorithms to identify trends and anomalies, and I can run any kind of search that I want from here. You'll notice that by default, it goes to the last 15 minutes, but of course, I can change that to anything that I want. I'm going to stop here um, and not go deeper into searching with Sumo Logic since that's a topic we've covered in other cases. But instead, what I wanted to do is um, demo the command line interface as well. So let me switch back here for a second to the slides and talk a little bit about the uh, command line interface. So CLI, um, you will need to download from GitHub the actual client. And once you install it, you're going to have to go through a little process where you do a handshake. The, the, the CLI on your machine has to recognize the uh, instance that you're running against. So you'll have to provide an access ID and an access key in order to do that. And I will briefly show you how you go about doing that. Um, but the instructions are, are pretty straightforward in our documentation. So if you haven't done this before, under your name, if you go to Preferences, you will find the ability to create access keys. And this is where you go and create a new access key. You provide a label. Perhaps I'm going to use this for my CLI, or let me call it Lifetail CLI. Um, actually, I have a second. I have one already there called that, so I'm going to create, call it number two. 
and click on generate key and that generates your access ID and your access key and this is what you would use in order to um, enter it in your um, here as you're setting up your um, your Livetail CLI session once you enter your access key and your access ID you'll be able to start your live session because I've done that already I'm going to show you an example here where um, I've already done that, and so in this case, I've done the handshake, if you will, and I can run Livetail. I'm going to run Livetail H first to show you some of the tools that are available to me. So obviously, I can do minus H, which is the help, but if I wanted to specify my access ID and my access key every time, I could do that as well to keep an even more secure connection. Um, so in this case, I'm going to run Livetail for my source category Apache Access Get, which is what I was doing before. I hit Enter, and as you'd expect, um, this is very similar to running um, Livetail on any other session by running tail F. Okay, let me pause there for a second. As I promised, this was going to be a short webinar given that uh, all the content is pretty straightforward. What I want to do is switch over to the documentation for a second because there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. So. Um, there are a couple limitations. For one, I mentioned that, uh, that you can only have uh, four sessions as a user. So there is a limit of four Livetail sessions per user. And currently, there is a limit of 10 concurrent Livetail sessions per organization as well. But probably more interesting, I want to show you the documentation for Livetail CLI. CLI, um, there we go. And a couple of things that I want to make sure that you are aware of is um, here's the documentation. Here's where you go to get GitHub to, uh, to download it. Um, you can go through these steps and you'll be able to easily download uh, the CLI client for that. And here's the uh, commands I was talking about. What I wanted to get to is the, the beauty about Livetail is that not only can you run commands similar to this, which is what I just wrote, uh, ran in my, uh, in my example, um, you can take advantage of running things like grabs or perhaps sending your results out to a file, as you would expect in any command line. Okay, so that was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, and a couple of observations. So the first one is that, CLI, uh, that Livetail is going to honor all role-based access control on all your users and your roles that already exist. And the second one, which is key to remember, is that Livetail is only supported on those sources that are configured on installed collectors. So if you have sources that are, uh, that are configured on hosted collectors, for example, your S3 from Amazon, um, those will not be supported. And as always, I'm pointing you to documentation so you can make sure that you take a peek at um, some of the limitations and session timeouts uh, for your concurrent Livetail sessions. Okay. So there you go. In summary, we've covered Livetail overview. We've reviewed some of the common use cases. I gave you a demo of how to uh, run, pause, and stop Livetail, how to do a little bit of filtering, how to do some highlighting, setting some of your preferences, and then switching over to, uh, to the search um, capability so you can do some trend analysis. Lastly, we looked a little bit of uh, Livetail CLI and how we can use that um, from our command line. So with that said, I'm going to open it up to questions right now. Any questions from the audience?